We'd like to welcome you at this time to tonight's senior night. First we have Alyssa Ayers, the daughter of Steve and Michelle Ayers. Her favorite class in school is band. Alyssa's favorite teacher, Mr. Tomeyer, says he would not have jokingly threatened to kidnap her. Then she would have never fallen in love with music and all the varieties of band. Alyssa plans to continue her education at Purdue University in Fort Wayne to study secondary education. Alyssa would like to thank all of her teachers for always helping and supporting her with everything that she does. Alyssa Ayers. Brody Balser is the son of Neil Balser and Nikki Chapman. He has played football all throughout high school. Brody's favorite football memory is playing with his brother during his freshman year. His hobbies include hanging out with friends, playing video games, and fishing. Brody Balser. <laughs> Zach Bell is the son of Matthew and Melinda Bell. Zach has been involved in both cross country and track all four years. After graduation, Zach plans on working until age 21 and then to train to become a state trooper. Zach Bell. <laughs> Lindsay Bergman is the daughter of Jennifer and Sean Bergman. She has been involved in volleyball, basketball, track, cheerleading, National Honor Society, and FCA. Lindsay's future plans are to go to college and major in elementary education. Lindsay Bergman. Katie Chapman is the daughter of Randy and Heather Chapman. She has one older brother, Eric. Katie is involved in cheerleading, softball, National Honor Society, and student council. She enjoys hanging out with her friends, and she plans on attending college to major in education. Katie Chapman. Oscar Camacho Martinez is the son of Oscar Camacho and Candy Conde Martinez. His sister is Leslie Camacho. Football is Oscar's favorite sport, and he will always carry it in his heart. Oscar hopes to enter the Army next year. 
His favorite memory is all the support that he felt when he started practicing for football. Oscar Camacho Martinez. Ella Clark is the daughter of Eric and Shelly Clark. She is the middle out of two sisters, Sophie and Olivia. Ella has been involved in cheerleading, National Honor Society, and has been a crew member for high school musical. Ella plans to attend Indiana University Fort Wayne for nursing and to eventually become a nurse practitioner. <coughs> Ella Clark. Jacob Evan is the son of Teresa and Steve Evan. His activities include marching band, pep band, and musical theater at Hicksville, and business professionals of America at Four County Career Center. Jacob's future plans include taking the year <coughs> himself to decide what to do. Right now, he's thinking of studying youth ministries at Kentucky Christian University. Jacob's highlights are being surrounded by people who love him, especially his band people. Yeah. Band has been a huge part of his life, and the people in it have made it more enjoyable. Jacob Evans. Yeah. Morgan Fogel is the daughter of Troy and Tina Fogel. Morgan has been involved in many activities at Hicksville High School, including golf, softball, archery, and National Honor Society. She has also played travel softball throughout her whole high school career. Morgan plans to major in sports management to become an athletic administrator. Morgan Fogel. Alex Gordon is the son of John Gordon and Missy Price. He has played football and basketball. Alex plans on entering the workforce after graduation. Alex Gordon. Jonathan Hutchinson is the son of Emily Hutchinson and John Hutchinson. He has been in marching bands and freshman year and joined football this year. Jonathan says that even though they have lost a lot of games this year, he has not lost his joy of playing football. One of his favorite members is going to the Ohio Cabinets and seeing the second line of slide time, the Crystal King. Jonathan plans to enter the workforce after graduation. Jonathan Hutchinson. Maverick Keysberry is the son of Dustin and Tamanda Keysberry. He is a four-year letterman in both baseball and golf. Maverick's greatest accomplishment is being four-year letter winner in multiple sports. Maverick plans to go to Ivy Tech to become a machinist and continue playing baseball. Maverick Keysberry. Aaron Klima is the son of Jim and Sharon Klima. Aaron has played football, basketball, and baseball all four years of high school. His favorite football memory is winning a playoff game his sophomore year. Aaron enjoys spending time with family and friends. He likes to hunt and fish in his free time. After high school, he plans on joining the workforce or going to college and playing baseball and major in business. Aaron Klimov. Calvin Lacey is the son of Mandy and Kent Lacey. Calvin has played in marching band, pep band, and concert band all four years of high school. He has participated in two high school musicals, Godspell and Annie. Calvin will be attending Indiana University in Fort Wayne, majoring in pre-med imaging. Calvin's favorite memory from high school is walking around the school with friends during class. Calvin Lacey. J.R. Mendoza is the son of Lena Mendoza and Cornelio Mendoza. J.R. has been in football, cross country, track, basketball, and track again. He's pretty good. His favorite highlight of high school has been going to regionals for the 4x800. 
J.R. plans on going to college to become a teacher, J.R. Mendoza. <laughs> Nolan Methven is the son of Galen and Mindy Methven. Nolan has been in football for all four years and track for two years. After graduation, Nolan plans to attend Purdue-Fort Wayne to major in biology. Nolan wants to eventually go to chiropractic school to become a doctor. Nolan Methven. Tori Perna is the daughter of Don and Liz Perna. Tori has been active in golf, cross country, and basketball. She is a member of the National Honor Society and has participated in 4-H throughout high school. Tori plans to attend Purdue University in Fort Wayne to pursue a degree in communication sciences and disorders. Tori Perna. Gabe Rodriguez is the son of Francisco Rodriguez and Tara George. Gabe has been involved in football, track, and National Honor Society. One of his favorite memories in high school was going to regionals in the 4x2 with Jackson Bergman, Isaac Ridgway, and Cole Workman, and placing six. Gabe plans on going to college and major in communication. Gabe Rodriguez. Mallory Sarce is the daughter of Gary Sarce and Andy Bennett. Mallory has participated in cheerleading and is also the Vice President of the National Honor Society. She has two younger siblings, Natalie and Malachi. After graduation, Mallory plans to go to Northwest State to pursue an education in nursing and plans to become a labor and delivery nurse. Mallory Sarce. Kenzie Schrader is the daughter of Jeff and Lori Schrader. Kenzie has been involved in golf, basketball, and National Honor Society. Her future plans include attending college to possibly play golf, to major in biomedical engineering, and hopes to become a dentist. The Aces would like to take this time to recognize Kenzie for qualifying for the Ohio High School Athletic Association State Golf Tournament for the second straight year. Great job, Kenzie. Kenzie Melissa and Leah Sykes are the daughters of Jeanette Sykes. Both Alyssa and Leah have been involved in golf, basketball, and softball. After graduation, Alyssa plans on entering the workforce, and Leah plans on going to school for early childhood development. Alyssa and Leah Sykes. Noah Schaefer is the son of Jeffrey Schaefer and Rachel Schaefer. Noah has always enjoyed school and the people he is surrounded by. He has been a part of the National Honor Society, Art Series, Marching Band, and Pep Band. His favorite teacher is Mrs. Lysett because he can walk up and talk to her and she's always willing to help. He wishes everyone to have a successful future. Go Aces! Noah Schaefer. Maddie Sterheim is the daughter of Ryan Sterheim and Emily McHugh. She has been involved in cheerleading, track, foreign language club, National Honor Society, and office working. Maddie's favorite teacher is Mr. Payne because he always keeps us on our toes and makes class fun. Maddie's future plans include going to Miami of Ohio University for elementary education. Whoa! Maddie Sterheim. Kelton Stone is the son of Jared and Tracy Stone. He has participated in cross country for four years and has a current personal record of 18 minutes and seven seconds. Kelton also runs track, going long distance and pole vault. Kelton is a member of the National Honor Society. After graduation, Kelton plans to attend college to become a respiratory therapist. Kelton Stone. Elena Stuckey is the daughter of Kevin and Beth Stuckey. She, is a, she has a younger brother, Owen. Elena has been involved in cheerleading, National Honor Society, student council, and foreign. She loves spending time with family and friends. Elena plans on attending college to major in business. Elena Stuckey. Michael Bolena is the son of Mike and Shannon Bolena. 
He has run track and cross country all four years of high school. Michael has been involved in archery and student council. Michael plans on attending Bowling Green State University Flight School to become a pilot. Michael Valena. Rachel Winker, the daughter of Thomas and Michelle Winker. She has participated in volleyball and track for three years and joined cross country this year. After graduation, Rachel plans on attending college to pursue a four-year degree. Rachel Winker. This time, we'd like to congratulate all the seniors and their parents. If you got a couple minutes here, if you want to take pictures while you're still out on the field, go ahead. Congratulations again, and thank you very much for four years of support. Good evening, football fans, and welcome to Aces Field on uh, this uh, beautiful Friday night in the uh, later part of October as we're getting ready for high school football action, uh, the uh, week number 10 game wrapping up the regular season as the homestanding Hicksville Aces are throwing out the welcome mat for the visiting Tenora Rams here at Aces Field tonight. Hi, everybody. I'm Bill Murphy with Hicksville Community Television. With me, Chris Warner, this evening. And we're getting ready to bring you Green Meadows Conference football action to wrap up what has been a tough season for the Aces in 2022. They come into tonight's game with a record of uh, two wins and seven losses. And they are two and four in the Green Meadows Conference, I believe. The Rams have a four and three record, if I remember correctly. And they are four and two in the GMC. So four and three against two and seven or something like that. Four and, let's see, not four and three. Yeah, that's nine, okay. Or four and five, five and four. Anyhow, the Rams have had a little better year. Of course, they've had their bits of uh, drama throughout the season as well. So we'll see how things go tonight as the Aces look to finish up the season on a winning note. And the Rams look to add another one in the win column for themselves as they wrap up their regular season. The Aces, of course, uh, not going to be in action for week number 11. I'm not sure whether the Rams have made it into the uh, expanded playoffs for football or not. Either way, we're glad to have you here with us as we're going to bring you the action on the Hicks TV YouTube channel here tonight. Hey, our coverage this evening being brought to you by our platinum-level underwriting supporter, underwriting all of our operations here at Hicksville Community Television, our good friends at Arc Solutions Incorporated in Hicksville, Ohio, located on Industrial Drive. Uh, you can find out more about the many solutions that they have for business and industry and the many things that they do, and they do some pretty wild and pretty incredible stuff out there. You can find out more by checking them out online at www.arcsolinc.com. Our good friends at Arc Solutions Incorporated of Defiance, our platinum level underwriting supporter. Thanks also to our three diamond level underwriting supporters. They underwrite all of our Aces sports coverage here on Hicksville Community Television. They include the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships in Hicksville, Ohio. Jim Schmidt Chevrolet Buick, Jim Schmidt Ford, and online at Jim Schmidt Auto. Dot com. Thanks also to APT Manufacturing Solutions of Hicksville, Ohio, located in Hicksville's Industrial Park, a world-class facility. Looking to hire some people to find out more, check them out online at www.aptmfg.com careers. 
and of course the Hicksville Pharmacy located in the heart of downtown Hicksville your good neighbor pharmacy with a full pharmacy to serve you and your family's needs over-the-counter medications medical equipment and more I want to thank them so very much for their support as well the Myers family the Hicksville Pharmacy again they're your good neighbor pharmacy right in the heart of downtown Hicksville Ohio so thanks to all of our diamond level underwriters as we get ready to uh, cap off the football season for this school year. And, of course, to our platinum-level underwriter as well. Uh, this is senior night. Uh, earlier they had a ceremony uh, here on the field where they recognized all of the seniors from the uh, winter, or for the fall sports, rather. Uh, so representatives from uh, cheerleading, uh, cross-country, the uh, football team, the uh, boys and girls golf teams, uh, and the band were all recognized. And uh, we did not have that as part of our live stream because they did it so far in advance of the start of the kickoff game. But uh, we did have the cameras rolling, so when we uh, edit this for broadcast, we will include that as part of the program. Aces will kick off to start the game. They won the toss and deferred to the Rams. So Tenora will have the ball first here tonight. And it's a hopper that is grabbed by the Rams at about midfield. And this is going to be great field possession for Tenora as the squib kick uh, hit the turf and went up into the air. But again, the Rams controlled it, and they advance it into the Aces' side of the field. It'll be first and 10 to Nora. It looks like at about the Hicksville 45, 40, or 46, 47 yard line. They're going to say the 46 yard line, first and 10 to Nora. So. The Rams, again, taking advantage of the squib kick to get some good field position to start off this contest. Aces black out tonight, of course, wearing the all-black uniforms. Tenora rolling out, ball in the air, caught, and dropped inside the 40 at about the 38, 39-yard line. Quarterbacking tonight is Dominic Graziani. He is uh, just a sophomore. He wears number five. And the uh, pass was caught by uh, Caden Radzik. The junior wrestled down at the 38-yard line. So it'll be a second and two for the Rams. Raziani puts a man in motion. Pitches it back. That's number 10 with the carry. That's first down and more. He's heading towards the end zone. He's around the corner. He's got nothing but daylight into the end zone. He goes Brandon Edwards. 37-yard sprint into the end zone, and just like that, the Rams are up 6 to nothing here at Aces Field tonight. So Tenora wasting no time in putting points on the board this evening. Their kicker, or there, is uh, Jake Bishop, Jake Bishop, number 44 going for the conversion attempt. It's good. So Bishop splits the uprights, and just like that, how do you do? It's 7-0 Rams, and we've only played 51 seconds of this game. So under a minute, and the Rams are in the end zone, and the Aces will get ready to get on offense for the first time tonight. The big honor for this evening on senior night is always... Uh, who gets to wear uh, the number 10 jersey in memory of uh, Noah Carrickson. And uh, that's Brody Balzer tonight, the Aces quarterback. Uh, his helmet will still have his regular number 13 on it, but he will be wearing that number 10 jersey for the game this evening. So the Aces will break huddle and head out onto the field and get ready to receive the kickoff. Balzer and Langham are going to be back deep. Grant Langham will be the deep man. And it'll be Rodriguez and Balzer, the other two deep guys. Rams getting ready. Lining it up. There's the kick, gets his foot into it. Scooped up. And... Out to about the 25-yard line. 
So Balzer returns the ball out to about the 25-yard line, and that's where the Aces will set up shop, first and 10. Ball just past the 25-yard line. Call it the 26, first and 10. So here's our first look at the Aces offense for this evening. Week number 10, Balzer puts a man in motion. That's Langham, and there'll be a false start, I do believe. So the Aces will be back in the uh, vicinity of their 20-yard line now. As a play blown dead with the false start, so it'll now be first and 15 from the 21-yard line. So we'll try it again here. And a fumbled snap, and it's still loose on the turf. And the Rams got it. Oh, my goodness. Brody had the ball bounce off his hands, and then he couldn't grab it on the turf, and the Rams fall on it back at about the 12-yard line, it looks like. Oh, man. That's the last thing that the Aces need to have happen in this game here tonight. So the first turnover of the game, and the Aces cough it up to the Rams. Tenor will have the ball first and 10 from the Aces' 12-yard line. Again, number five, their quarterback, Dominic Graziani. And the ball carrier brought down just short. Handed off to uh, Cole Anders. And Anders, the senior, takes it down to about the one-yard line. So that'll be first and goal from the one-yard line from the for the Rams. Graziani going to go up under center. Hand off and stopped in the backfield. Ball carried number 36. And that was uh, Swinehagen, Colt Swinehagen. And uh, he'll get back to about the line of scrimmage, they're going to say. So second and goal from the one-yard line. Graziani puts a man in motion, pitches it back, heading upfield. And that was uh, Brandon Edwards taking it into the end zone. Another touchdown for the Rams as now they are up 13 to nothing. And another conversion attempt pending. Uh, Jake Bishop getting set to kick it once again. The score comes with 9 minutes, 37 seconds to go here in quarter number one. Kick is up. And that one is also good. And the Aces find themselves now down by two touchdowns as the Rams take advantage of the fumble and make it burn. Punch it into the end zone. Edwards with a score on the second and goal from the one-yard line. It's 14 to nothing to Nora. So the Aces got to uh, get the ship righted here and uh, get their legs back underneath them. They'll get ready to get the ball back and go back on offense again. And try to get, get things going offensively here. So not get too far behind here on senior night. So here come Hicksville's receiving squad out onto the field. And Bishop once again will tee things up and get ready to kick it off for the Rams. Another good kick, and that one's going to go 
Oh, down near the goal line, but it bounces. It takes a Tenora bounce, scooped up. And I believe Balzer is the one that has it, and he's going to get taken down right around the 10-yard line. So that ball sailed well over the heads of the deep men, and it actually landed just shy of the end zone line, but it bounced back towards the center of the field, a good Tenora bounce, and then Balzer was able to scoop it up and, again, uh, work his way out to about the 10-yard line. That's where they're going to place it officially, first and 10 on the 10 for the Aces. And not much there on that one. Green with the carry, and Green's going to actually lose a yard. It'll be second and 11 now as they move back to the nine. So Hicksville with a second and 11 now from their own nine-yard line. Looking to make something happen, getting themselves a little breathing room to work with offensively. Ball in the air, overthrown. It was over Klima's head, and that'll be incomplete, and that'll bring up third down. Christopher's yawning already. Oh, well, yeah, that's. it wasn't a day off for school for the four county kids. Yes, so. Yeah, it was not a day off for so. the four county kids. The Hicksville schools, because the parent-teacher conferences had a day off today. But Christopher was in school. Yes. So that makes sense that you're kind of tired. Yes, and actually I had uh, three tests today, too, and that's oh. exhausted my brain a little bit. Balzer with the snap. Rolling out. Brody looking downfield. Brody still looking. Puts the ball in the air. This one's going to be out of bounds and uncatchable. That's going to bring up fourth down, and the Aces look like they'll be punting from their end zone here. So Balzer's going to drop back to punt it away. Brody gets it away. Nice punt. It'll be caught right at about the 40-yard line. And working his way around number 11 with the carry. He's to the 20. And he'll go out of bounds right about there. So the return was Cole Anders, and Anders is going to get the ball down to about the 20-yard line with a good return of about 20, 21 yards. We'll see where they mark him. As again, the Rams are going to start off with excellent field position for this offensive drive. Aces. And so the Aces, there was a penalty against them. I didn't see the I didn't see the yellow flag, to be honest with you. I saw the possession change go down, but there was a half the distance to the goal line penalty, so that makes it first and goal from the ten for the Rams. Raziani pitches back. Heading towards the end zone, and that's going to be six more for the Rams as Brandon Edwards takes it in again, and that'll make it 20-0 with the extra point kick pending. So it's been all Rams here tonight. We still have almost eight and a half minutes to play in the first quarter, and the Ace is looking to go down by three touchdowns if this is a successful kick by Edwards, or by Bishop, excuse me. It's going to be a fake. They're going to roll out and try to go for two. Raziani throws the ball. It's going to be tipped and incomplete. So they fake the kick and go for the two-point conversion unsuccessfully. So that will keep the score at 20 to nothing, and the Aces will look to go back on offense here at Aces Field tonight. 
It has been all Tenora so far. They have had excellent field position. All three of their offensive possessions have resulted in scores. They uh, started uh, the first possession with the uh, squib kick that they recovered and advanced a little bit. So their first uh, possession started on the 47-yard line of the Aces. Then they recovered a fumble on like the 9-yard line. And this time a punt return out to the 20-yard line and then a penalty advancing it 10 more yards. Half the distance to the goal to the 10-yard line. So they have yet to start an offensive series tonight from their own half of the field. So Bishop is going to be kicking off again. He's getting a workout tonight. He's kicked two extra points, and he's kicked it off to the aces. This will be the third time. And he'll get his foot into this one. It's another good kick. It'll be caught at about the 13 by Balzer. Balzer working his way through, and a nice return from Brody as he'll get out to about the 32-yard line. And that's where the Aces will set up shop, first and 10. So first and 10 for Hicksville at their own 32-yard line. So Aces get their personnel set. And we'll get ready to get things going. Brody works out of the shotgun. Green, the split back beside him, puts a man in motion. That's Langham. He'll pitch it back to Langham. Langham's going to put it into the air, and it's going to be picked off. Intercepted by the Rams and returned to the 45-yard line, and I think that was Graziani, their quarterback, also on defense, makes the interception. Number five was the one with the Yep, Dominic Graziani, and he'll get the ball back to the 45-yard line of the Aces. So, again, the Rams take advantage of a turnover and get excellent field position, and once again, they're going to start an offensive drive already on the Aces' half of the field, already leading 20 to nothing. So here come the Rams. Graziani's going to work out of the shotgun. He's got three out wide on the far side, two on the near side towards us. Graziani puts it in the air, caught. First down yardage and more. Brandon Edwards will take it down inside the 30-yard line to about the 29-yard line. It'll be first and 10 Rams. So the Rams driving once again. Graziani pitches it back once again. And that's a fumble. Edwards had the ball. He fumbled it before he went down. And the uh, Aces are going to recover. So finally, the, the break goes uh, the Aces' way. There's a Ram player down on the field, but the Aces are going to recover the fumble, and they're going to take over on offense. Looks like they'll be at about their 11-yard line. First and 10 when we uh, resume play after the injury timeout. Well, we want to say a congratulations to the Lady Aces volleyball squad. Uh, the Lady Aces volleyball uh, team uh, won their sectional final last night uh, at the Red Zone, defeating the uh, Lady Locomotives of Montpelier. And with the win, uh, they will advance now to the districts. Uh, the district that they'll play in is at Defiance High School. And uh, the Lady Aces will be back in action next week on Tuesday. They will be playing in a district semifinal against the uh, Lady Pilots of Ayersville. That'll be at Defiance High School, and uh, right now they're saying 7.30, but of course that time is approximate. It's the late session game. The early game, uh, there will be a Hilltop taking on Edgerton. Uh, the uh, Lady Cadets are the number two seed. Edgerton, I believe, is the number three seed in the sectional. 
The Lady Aces were the number one seed, and uh, Ayersville, I believe, is the number six seed. But uh, just mention that because uh, we are going to be heading over there, uh, Christopher and myself. Uh, hopefully, uh, Stephanie Mazur will be able to come along with us, and Brian Williams, too, and we'll have the whole crew there to bring you live coverage of the uh, district semifinal between the Lady Aces and the Lady Pilots volleyball squads. That'll be again next week, Tuesday, on the Hicksville Community Television Facebook page. All right, Aces with the first and 10 on their own 10-yard line. And uh, that time the hard count works. And it looks like they're going to get five the easy way. The injured player for Tenora was number 10. That's Edwards, Brandon Edwards. He was the one that fumbled the ball. He took a kind of a shot there. He was able to walk off on his own yeah. power, though. It looked like I don't know whether a he took the yeah, I don't know whether he took the shot to uh, cough up the football or if he took one in the ribs while he was scrambling trying to get the football back. But good to see that he, he's up and off under his own power. So first and five now. And it's going to be a quarterback keeper from Balzer. Balzer across the 20 to near the 25. That'll move the chains for the Aces. So they'll put the ball at the 25-yard line where it'll be a first down for Hicksville. 7.15 to go here in our opening quarter. Aces down 20 to nothing. Dodged a bullet there because... Uh, the Rams were in prime position to put more points on the board, but they recover a fumble, and they're trying to capitalize on it with this offensive drive right here. Balzer hands it off to Green. Green to the 30-yard line, pickup of about five. That'll be second and five now for the Aces. So a second and five for the Aces as they move the ball out to the 30-yard line. Balls are hard count. Nobody budges from the Rams side. Another handoff to Green. Green will get about three that time. He'll take it out to the 38. That'll make it third and about two. So a third and two now. High snap. Balzer controls it. Brody. Pushing forward, he's going to get about a yard. He's going to be shy of the line again. They're going to say no gain on the play, and that's going to bring up fourth and two for the Aces. Decision time. Ball at the 33-yard line. And it looks like They need another man on the field. The time is clicking away. Balls are dropping back to punt. High snap. Brody almost gets it blocked, but he gets the punt away. And that's going to uh, take an Aces or a Tenora roll, and the Aces are going to down it. And it looks like about the 49 yard line. So this time the Rams will start an offensive drive on their own side of the field, but not by much. So it'll be Tenora's ball first and 10 on their own 49-yard line, the first time they've started an offensive drive from their side of the field tonight. 4.46 to go here in our opening quarter. Bill and Chris, glad to have you with us here on the Hicks TV YouTube channel for varsity football on a Friday night. Graziani. Dropping back, rolling, ball caught. 
A little shake and bake move. Uh, the ball caught by Anders, and Anders out across the 40-yard line into Ace's territory. And he'll be uh, knocked out of bounds at about, looks like about the 38-yard line. So Anders will take the ball to the 38-yard line. It'll be a first and 10 for the Rams. Graziani will head in from the sideline with the play. Jeff Schleser, head coach for the Rams tonight. And, of course, Lucas Smith coaching for the Aces. Graziani, quick handoff, powering straight ahead. That's number four, Gusweiler. Grady Gusweiler gets across the 35 to about the 34-yard line. So Gus Weiler with a pickup of about four will make it second and six for the Rams. Graziani will work out of the shotgun now. Quick pass out. Again, that's the Gus Weiler, and Gus Weiler will tippy-toe ahead down to about the 31-yard line before he's knocked out of bounds. Gordon is the one that knocked him out of bounds down to the 31-yard line where it will be third down and about three. Well, they're going to say third and four officially. Okay. Man in motion for the Rams, Graziani. Hand off, Gus Weiler, nothing doing there, waiting for him that time. He gets stood up right at the line of scrimmage and pushed backwards. He might have even lost about a half a yard. Yep, moving back to the 32. Fourth down now for the Rams. Methvin was the one that stood him up and pushed him back for the Aces. Rossiani will bring in the play from the sideline once again. Hand off and a nice hole, and this could be trouble. Schweinhagen into the end zone, touchdown Rams. Cole Schweinhagen gets the carry. He had a nice seam, and then he turned on the burners, and off he goes and into the end zone to make it a 26 to nothing game. And again, they'll bring out Bishop to set up to kick for the extra point. We'll see if they actually do it. They faked it earlier. And they're going to kick it this time. And that looks good, and it is. 27-0 now as the Rams add to their lead over the Aces and start to raise the specter of going up by 30 or more points at the half, which would institute the running clock for the second half of play here at Aces Field tonight. So... Aces will get ready to go back on offense. We're still in the first quarter here tonight. We still have 2.55 to go in quarter number one. Now, but I'm going to ask you a question here because we've never had a situation like this before, at least as long as I've been here. I don't, can you get the running clock in the second quarter? I don't believe so. I don't believe well, so. I, I guess we're going to find out. Uh, yeah, I, I, Possibly. I, I don't think that goes into effect until the second half. But... We're not going to worry about that because we're going to hope the Aces yeah, are going to get, get things going offensively here and uh, warm up a little bit and put some points on the scoreboard. So here we go. Bishop once again to put his leg into it. So far he's been doing some great kicking this evening. 
And the ball bouncing around loose, scooped up at about the 12-yard line. And breaking free, it's going to be a foot race. Across midfield to about the 48-yard line. So, great return. I think that was, was that Langham that had the carry? Number eight. And with that great return, the Aces have their best field position of the night, starting on the Rams' side of the field, first and 10 from Tenora's 49-yard line, and then a bobbled snap and a... Well, Bob Balzer had no choice. He just fell on the ball, and they touched him down. That's back at the Aces' 46-yard line. So that'll be a loss of about five. And so second, now they're going to say a loss of four. I, I, it's five yards. I'm sorry. That's second and 15. There we go. They got to correct it on the scoreboard now. Second and 15 for the Aces. Man in motion. Hand up. Nope, I guess a quarterback keeper, but it didn't fool anybody, and that's going to be another drop for a loss. And that's going to lose another yard back to the 44-yard line. So that's going to break it third and 17. So the Aces moving in the wrong direction here. Third and 17 as they started on the Rams 49. Now they're back on their own 44. Balls are with the snap. Ball in the air, caught. And out to about the 45-yard line. Stuckey made the grab, and they're going to say he actually went down at the 46-yard line. So that's going to make it fourth and seven now for the Aces on the Rams' side of the field. And looks like they're going to go for it here. So the Aces going to take a crack at a fourth and seven, under a minute to go here in the half. Balzer. Dropping back to throw, looking downfield. Ball in the air, and another interception. Yep. Number 34 for the Rams with the interception. Yep, that will be uh, Joey Geisinger. So Geisinger makes the grab, and it's another turnover for the Aces with 26 seconds to go here in our opening quarters. So the Rams will be back on offense, and they'll start first and 10 from their own 43-yard line. Graziani under center, dropping back to throw. Graziani puts the ball in the air, caught. That's Radzik with the grab. Radzik out to the Aces 41-yard line is where he'll be dropped. Caden Radzik, Jr. So 41-yard line, and that'll be another first down for the Rams as they'll say, wind that clock up. That'll be the end of the first quarter. So we've played the first 12 minutes, and boy, that took a long time. And at the end of one, it's the Rams dominating the Aces here at Aces Field tonight, 27 to nothing, our first quarter score. Get ready for quarter number two, and we'll say thanks to one of our Diamond Level underwriters making our coverage possible here this evening. And that's APT Manufacturing Solutions of Hicksville, Ohio, located in Hicksville's Industrial Park, world-class facility where they offer robotic packing and palleting solutions, welding, powder coating, and lots, lots more. 
You can find out more by checking them out online. And as a matter of fact, they're looking to add to the workforce. Yep, maybe you can become a member of the APT family. You can find out about the many opportunities available by going online to www.aptmfg.com slash careers. Full listing of all the opportunities that they have available. Many come with training and certification opportunities. You can uh, fill out an application, upload your resume. They'd love to hear from you. We love having them as one of our Diamond Level Underwriting supporters. Our good friends, Tony Nicewander and all of the gang at APT Manufacturing Solutions right here in Hicksville, Ohio and online at www.aptmfg.com slash careers. So we get ready for quarter number two. Aces with the ball, first and 10 at the 41-yard line. Graziani handoff, and that's going to be nothing doing there. Ball carried by uh, Cole Schweinhagen. Schweinhagen's going to actually lose a yard, make it second and 11. Methvin was uh, in on the tackle there for the Aces. Graziani in some trouble, and he's going to get, he's going to throw it away, and that might be, we'll see if there's going to be a flag on that one. He was scrambling out of the pocket. I don't think he got it back to the original line of scrimmage. They're having a consultation. I know the Aces coaching staff, which is adjacent to us here in the press box, have a very decided opinion as to whether or not that was grounding. And they are going to throw the flag. Yep, intentional grounding, so that'll back them up and it'll be lost it down. <coughs> That's going to move the ball back to the to Nora 43 yard line. And that's going to be third, and looks like about 22, 23 yards to go. Graziani hands it off. And again, uh, they'll give that to Schweinhagen. Schweinhagen will take it out to about the 44-yard line, and the Rams will get ready to punt it away. And I think this will be their first punt of the night. Bishop drops back. He is uh, handling all the kicking chores here tonight. He's... Done the kickoffs, the extra point conversion kicks, and punting now as well. Long snap, and a flag is thrown. And the kick caught back at about reversing the field. It's across the 30. Langham. Didn't quite make it to the 35-yard line, but a nice return, and we'll see what the flag is. The flag was thrown right at the moment that the ball was snapped. And you see the flag right on the 45-yard line of the Rams. So discussions are being made. And it's going to be a false start against the Rams, and it will just be declined. Aces aren't going to back him up and have him kick it again. They'll just take the ball where they had it at their 34-yard line, it looks like, or maybe 35, at 35. First and 10 for Hicksville. So the official will pick up that flag at the 45-yard line, and we'll get ready to get back into action. Brody Balser.
takes the snap. Balzer drops back. Ball in the air. Looking for Clement's going to be picked off again. That's uh, Carter Gilliam. And Gilliam. Gilliam's going to motor down the field. We'll see where he steps out. They're going to say 30-yard line. So number, number eight, Carter Gilliam with the interception, and then he'll return it to the Aces 30-yard line as Hicksville's offensive woes just continue here tonight. 10-12 to go in quarter number two. And the Rams back on offense and once again with pretty decent field position. I think that's the uh, third interception of the game, if I'm counting correctly. A lot of turnovers. Yes. The Aces have got one, but the, the Rams have benefited three, four times here tonight, yeah. Braziani pitches it back. Nice hole, working his way into the open and into the end zone. Touchdown, Grady Gusweiler. Gusweiler had no problems at all. He's shaking off the Aces defenders, and he goes into the end zone. Touchdown, Tenora. That'll make it 33 to nothing. And they'll bring Bishop back out for another extra point attempt. Jake Bishop lining it up. It's the first time he's had to kick from this end of the field. And yep, he bounces it off the roof of the hut. It's good. And the Rams now find themselves in the lead 34 to nothing with 10 minutes and one second to go before halftime. And the Aces will regroup and get ready to get the football back and go back on offense here at Aces Field tonight. Well, when we get to halftime, of course, Chris and I, as usual, will take a break. We'll turn the field mics on and we'll bring you the halftime entertainment. The Rams marching band is here tonight. And the Aces Pride, of course, will have their special senior night halftime show this evening. So getting things set for Bishop to kick off to the Aces once again. So Bishop puts his foot into it. Nice kick. Caught way back at the four-yard line. Langham working through traffic. His feet go out from underneath him, and they'll bring him down at the 20. So Aces will get the ball first and 10 at about their own 20-yard line. 9.53 to go here in quarter number two. Walzer. And again, he drops the ball and has to go down on his knee to keep it from being a turnover, and he'll gonna lose about five yards. That'll drop him back to the 16 yard line, so it'll be second and 14 for the Aces. Balzer's going to hang on to it himself, powering forward. And he'll get a few. So Balzer moves it out a couple of yards. 
Ball at the 16-yard line now. Still third and 13. Again, it's going to be a quarterback keeper for Brody, and Brody not quite to the 20-yard line. And that'll bring up fourth and about 12. And the punting unit will come back out for the Aces, and the Rams will look to get the football back, and once again, probably in pretty good field position. Tenora's deep men, number one, Caden Radzik, and number 11, Cole Anders. Not much pressure on Balzer. It's a high parabolic kick, and it's caught at the 48-yard line. And Radzik will take it down inside the 25, about the 24-yard line. Balser kicked the ball, and Balser was the one that tackled Radzik. But again, great field position for the Rams. 24-yard line, they say. Yep. First and 10 to Nora. 7.39 to go in the half. Graziani and Lork up and under center. Quick handoff. Number 36, again, that's Schweinhagen. Cole Schweinhagen down to about the 17-yard line. Rodriguez got him to stop him before he went any further, but ball at the 17, where it'll be second and about four, or three maybe. Yeah, second and three. Raziani quick handoff. Just looking to move the chains. And that was uh, number uh, number four, Gustweiler, Grady Gustweiler. And he gets them the yards they need for a fresh set of downs. So down to the 13-yard line of the Aces now, first and 10 Rams, as we are nearing the halfway point of quarter number two with 6.30 on the clock and the clock rolling. Man in motion pitch back. That's Anders, and Anders is in some trouble. Cole Anders got the pitch back, uh, and then uh, he got swarmed under by the Aces. Good defense from Hicksville. As he'll be dropped for a loss of about three. To make it second and 13. Pitch back. Powering forward down to about the 15-yard line. That was uh, Schweinhagen. So Cole Schweinhagen gets it down to the 14-yard line. So I'm going to double-check a score they just announced here. Uh, uh, it was Antwerp 21 to nothing over Edgerton yeah, is what they were so saying. Yeah, which I don't know if that's halftime or quarter score, so I'm going to see here if I can find that out real quick. Meanwhile, on the field here, Raziani under center. Dropping back. Going to hang on to it himself. Finds a hole. Graziani heading towards the end zone, and he's in. Touchdown to Nora. Graziani looked like he was going to try to throw the ball, but there was nothing there, so his seam opened up in front of him. He took off running, and he makes his way into the end zone from 13 yards out. Touchdown, Rams, to make it 40 to nothing with 4 minutes and 59 seconds to go here in the half. Zero, nine, seven, nine, five, four. Zero, nine, 
Bishop lining up again. Low snap, and they're going to blow that one dead. And that's going to be encroachment on the aces. If they accept it, that'll be half the distance to the goal line, and the Rams then might want to think about going for two. They'll be a yard closer. Now it looks like they're going to still set for the kick. And no doubt about that one, too. We're right down the main street, middle of between the posts, and the kick is good. And it'll be 41 to nothing with, again, one second under five minutes to go. 4.59 to go here in quarter number two. The Aces will get ready to go on at, back on offense once again here tonight. And what's turning out to be kind of a long night for Aces fans so far this evening. Okay, I cannot find any official postings of the score, so we're just going to take it as is. Yep. Antwerp 21, Edgerton 0. 0. We, we did not catch when they, whether that was after 1 or if that was at halftime. Which uh, Edgerton, uh, I don't know their record. Uh, I thought they were undefeated going yes, into. Yes, I thought they were as well. But, hey, you know, that's why they play mm -hmm. the game stuff. Unpredictable things like that can happen. You know, good, good job for the Archers. And you never know, too, if they've got the GMC championship locked up and they've got uh, – tournament football coming up they may be letting their younger players play tonight just to make sure nobody gets hurt and everybody can get rested up for the playoff run nice return for the aces out to the 35 yard line and again Brant Langham doing a yeoman's job he's had some really good returns on kickoffs here tonight hasn't really been able to break one but still getting him out to the 35 yard line and fairly decent field position to start this offensive drive. Okay, so I got an end of the first quarter for the Apaches. Uh, they're trailing the Pilots 6-0. to zero. All right. That's Fairview. And I'll try and find uh, who else is. Uh, had, Wayne Trace and Paulding. Wayne and, Trace and Paulding. That's the other one I got to find. out. Okay. And not much there. As Balzer ran into his own guy. And uh, gets brought down for a minimal gain. Make it second and nine. Balzer got about a half yard on that carry. Clock continues to roll. Brody's going to hang on to it himself again out across the 32-yard line and stop there. Balzer gets about a yard and a yard and a half. It'll be third and eight for the Aces. I was not able to find Paul Diener wing trace. Yeah. We'll see if we can track anything down as the evening goes on. If not. And the score from Ayersville and Fairview was posted six minutes ago. Yeah. And out to the 39-yard line. As Langham, he'll be well short of first down yardage. The Aces need to get it to the 45-yard line to move the chains. So fourth down and six on their own 39-yard line, and Balzer's going to drop back to punt. 
Clock still rolling, getting down to about probably about two and a half minutes to go in the half by the time the ball was snapped and kicked. High snap. Brody gets his foot into it. Going to come down and be caught. That's number 11, Anders, Cole Anders. And he'll uh, return a short return, but he'll get it to about the 40-yard line of the Rams. And with 2 minutes and 14 seconds to go before halftime, Rams will be back on offense once again here at Aces Field tonight. Starting to see all kinds of wild LED lights going on over by the Rams band tonight. Back on down to the gridiron. Rams with the ball. Graziani, quick handoff. That was uh, number 20 carrying the ball, Cooper Farrell. Farrell picks up a couple to make it second and eight. Jonathan Hutchinson, who's one of the seniors on the squad, made that tackle. And that was his fellow seniors cheering for that. Graziani again a handoff and another nice hole and this could be trouble once again and breaks free he's heading towards the end zone it's going to be a foot race and they're going to catch him before he gets in another strong run by Cooper Farrell only his second carry of the night first one was good for two yards this one he motors down inside the 10 yard line to give the Rams a first and goal from the five. Well, they're going to say at the six-yard line. <coughs> Minute 16 to go, clock rolling. And the Rams are going to see if maybe they can punch it in one more time before halftime. First and goal from the six, under a minute to go, clock rolling. The Rams have all three timeouts if they want to use them. Quick handoff. That was uh, number 36, Cole Schweinhagen, powering forward for a couple more yards. He'll get three. That'll make it second and goal from the three-yard line. Clock rolling, 15 seconds. Might be the last play. We'll see. Quick handoff. And that'll be another touchdown. Cole Schweinhagen takes it in from three yards out with eight seconds still to go in the half. Makes it 47 to nothing. They'll set for another conversion attempt. Bishop lining up again. And another good kick. And another extra point. Four. Over, over the roof. Yep, the, he, he kept hitting higher up on the roof each kick that he did. That one went over the top, so... Eight seconds to go in the half, and it's 48 to nothing. Rams, and of course that means that we're going to have the running clock in the second half, which is going to make it even tougher on the Aces. They'll need to score 19 points to get the clock back into uh, 
normal operation. So we're going to anticipate a quick moving second half here at Aces Field tonight. Aces will get the ball back, but they're not going to have much time to work with it. So we'll see if they're going to try to maybe launch one down the field and see what happens before halftime or if they'll be willing just to let the time expire and go into the locker room. Bishop teeing it up at the 40-yard line for the Rams. And a good kick, and Langham is going to catch it back at the seven-yard line. Langham takes up off the upfield. Langham out to about the 25, 26-yard line. He'll be brought down, and there's all zeros on the scoreboard, and that's the end of the first half. So we've played the first 24 minutes of football here at Aces Field tonight, and at halftime, it's the visiting Rams 48 and the Hicksville Aces 0. Uh, they're having a special presentation out on the field from the uh, Hicksville Eagles for the Hicksville Splash Pad. And that's not nothing to sneeze at. That's a $25,000 donation that the Eagles have made for the uh, Splash Pad. So hats off to them. Hey, I want to say a thank you to another one of our Diamond Level underwriters making our coverage possible here tonight. And that's the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships in Hicksville, Ohio. Jim Schmidt Chevrolet Buick, Jim Schmidt Ford, and online at jimschmidtauto.com. Remember, if you're in the market for a vehicle, brand new pre-owned car, truck, van, or SUV, stop by, check out the selection on the lot so you can check out the entire dealer inventory on time, online anytime at jimschmidtauto.com. Remember, it's always about service before, during, and after the sale at the Jim Schmidt family of automotive dealerships in Hicksville, Ohio, Jim Schmidt Chevrolet Buick, Jim Schmidt Ford, and online at jimschmidtauto.com. There's Mr. Jim Schmidt and his lovely wife down there on the field right now, as a matter of fact. It's part of that donation from the Eagles to the, uh, to the splash pad here in Hicksville. And Jim and Karen down there, and again, could not ask to meet two nicer people, two better people to do business with as well. Longtime supporters of Hicksville Community Television. Can't thank them enough. Well, we're getting ready to turn on the field microphones and let you be entertained by the Rams and the Aces Pride Marching Band. And Christopher and I will take a break, but don't go anywhere. We will be back. We'll have all the exciting second half play-by-play -play coming your way right here on Hicks TV. 